Hello, my name is Kate Rayner. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the studio technical director at The Coalition. The Coalition is a first party Microsoft game studio. As part of Xbox Game Studios, we get to work alongside some of the greatest game developers and game franchises in the industry. Xbox Game Studios has been expanding with Bethesda Studios recently announcing that they're joining Xbox. And with it, these incredible franchises and incredible game developers we now get to work alongside. It has been working with Xbox and working with middleware providers like Epic and the Unreal Engine that we've been able to create some of the industry-defining experiences of each generation. Gears of War has a long legacy with the Unreal Engine. It has always been known as a visual and technical showcase, both for Xbox and for Unreal Engine. This all started with Gears of War on the Xbox 360, as Epic used Unreal Engine 3 to showcase both the capabilities of that game engine, as well as utilizing the full power of Xbox 360, delivering a visual showcase beyond anything anyone had seen at the time, and delivering what is defined as the killer app for the Xbox 360. In 2014, Gears of War came internally to Microsoft, and with it, the coalition was given the opportunity to shepherd the Gears franchise onto a new generation of consoles with a new generation of Unreal Engine 4. With its enhanced graphical capabilities and features and leveraging the power of Xbox One, Xbox One S, and Xbox One X, we pushed the game to new visual standards, delivering 60 frames per second, HDR, and bringing the game back to Windows with cross-platform play. Gears 4 on Unreal Engine 4 is something I'm really proud of at the Coalition and really continue that legacy of Gears being a visual and technical showcase. This journey, of course, continued with Gears 5, the latest version of Gears, where we, le where we leverage and use the latest innovations in Unreal Engine 4 and push Gears onto new platforms, adding native support for Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S, adding 120 frames per second to multiplayer, 4K HDR rendering, adding new graphical features like variable rate shading, screen space global illumination, and continuing to push the hardware and the full capabilities of what you can do with Unreal Engine 4. Recently, the coalition announced that we are looking towards the future. And with it, we have been working with Epic on Unreal Engine 5. For us, this is about a foundation for a new generation of games at the coalition. This is also about ensuring the engine is optimized and that we can push generation nine Xbox Series X and S and high-end modern PC graphics to the to the greatest level possible. We've been really excited with Unreal Engine 5 so far, far, both with what we can achieve visually, as well as what it can do to empower our artists and our workflows. However, it's still really early. For us, this is a great opportunity for us to kick the tires, provide feedback to Epic, and work closely collaborating with them to ensure the engine is optimized for Generation 9, optimized for Xbox and Microsoft platforms, and meets the needs that we have for our internal titles. Now, we're the coalition, so we're known for Gears of War, but I want everyone to know that unfortunately, there will be no product announcements today. Nothing of what we're going to be showing is related to a future Gears title or any titles that we're working on internally. What we're going to show you is 
I think, a really amazing technical demo showcasing what we can do today with Unreal Engine 5. So without further ado, I'm going to pass this along to Colin Penty, our Studio Technical Art Director, who's going to show you our Alpha Point UE5 demo, Unlocking Artist's Potential. Thanks, Kate. Hi, everyone. I'm Colin Penty. My pronouns are he, him, and I am Studio Technical Art Director at The Coalition. I'm here today to talk to you about Alpha Point, uh, our UE5 demo, Unlocking Artist Potential. These are some topics we'll be covering today, some very cool things. So goals for Alpha Point. Uh, we wanted to define high polygon modeling texturing workflows. We wanted to implement our new base material and texture pipeline. We wanted to modify the engine and gauge the ability to change the engine in UE5. So we did two changes uh, to this demo. We added Convolution Bloom uh, for Xbox and optimized it. And we added a visual effects G-buffer with Niagara Readback. Uh, we also, for this demo, wanted to evaluate mega scans, of course, evaluate Nanite and Lumen, UE5 in gem general, and then, of course, measure this uh, on Xbox Series X and S for performance and memory and look for any additional issues. Disclaimers. So, all assets here are built specifically for the Alpha Point tech test. Uh, they do not represent any games currently in development at the Coalition. Demo was initially made to be just seen internally. We never intended for this to be presented at, at GDC um, or go on YouTube, uh, but this is great that we get to talk about this. 90% uh, of these assets were built by the coalition and 10% are mega scans. This demo is captured live off Xbox Series X, uh, which is fantastic. And this demo is also not representative of final frame target, frame rate targets, not representative of final input or output resolutions. Uh, so without f further ado, here is the Alpha Point uh, visual tech test. Hope you enjoy it. Great. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, so here is some uh, a slide of sort of some early images we gathered to get inspiration for this demo. It was generally a, a mixture of, of sort of ancient ruins and technology. It was quite interesting to us. So that is um, what sort of Keswick Allen, our lead artist, was was pushing for here. Here's some early images from Alpha Point. Uh, you know, on the left here, you can see uh, some gray box level. You can see here a sculpt in ZBrush with the pillar and uh, another sculpt and then the obelisk. Very simple early days. This is sort of at the midpoint what the corridor looked like. A few sculpts in there, lighting's kind of broken. <laughs> it doesn't look like much at this point. So some tech stats. Uh, this is running on UE5 Early Access. It is a 30 FPS cinematic on Xbox Series X. We're outputting at 4K uh, using Temporal Super Resolution, UE5's new uh, upscaler. Um, internally, the input res is about 1080p to 1440p, uh, and the scene has over 100 million triangles in it. 
We are using Nanite Lumen, Virtual Shadow Maps, Virtual Textures, TSR, Temporal Super Resolution, Convolution Bloom, and, and many other new technologies. The tech journey. So we began production of this demo actually in UE4. We knew we were going to get UE5 soon, but and we knew we were going to have to get used to high polygon modeling. Uh, so we started this in UE4 in October. We switched to UE5 in late November. Uh, funny fact is this demo was running really painfully slow in UE4 uh, right before we switched to UE5. The artists were all complaining. Um, and it's just a result of these really heavy meshes in the scene. UE4 isn't quite built to handle that. Uh, so switching to UE5 was, was amazing. All of a sudden Nanite was there and Nanite was crunching through these assets and things were running much more responsive in the editor. Uh, we completed this demo in about early February uh, in an early UE5 build, pre-early access, and then upgraded to UE5 early access in May. And then at that point, uh, I went through and kind of gathered um, some performance and memory numbers again and kind of updated things because we knew we'd be presenting this. Uh, so we wanted to make sure we had the most up-to-date uh, performance numbers. So high polygon modeling findings. So modeling these high poly assets can be time consuming, probably not a huge surprise, uh, but yes, it is more time consuming. Uh, requires more upfront planning we found. Uh, reuse is key for these assets, uh, making sure things are kit bashable in a way, um, getting rid of things like skirts and, and things that prevent you from kit bashing your assets. And uh, we found good concept would be really important here, more valuable than before, uh, to really give a direction uh, which way you're going to go so to prevent rework. Since all the details are sculpted, attention to scale is critically important. It's a, harder to correct scale issues after the fact if it's actually modeled into the geometry versus a texture like a brick. Think of a simple example of like a brick, right? Having that brick texture, um, changing the scaling on that is, is fairly straightforward, but changing the scale of a of brick geo is, is harder to do. And so that kind of goes back to the, the, the concept and, and having your play play with rough sculpts. So what we, we decided is we'd do rough sculpts, which is sort of a, a quick sculpt of, a, of an object to get an idea of scale and, and detail, and put that in the environment, put the player next to it, and then look at it uh, before we go through and do the final polish sculpt. And the other finding was going over 1 million triangles is challenging in DCC tools. Uh, the, some of the tools struggle with this, and I'll talk more about that. So some of the issues. So where we landed on in this demo uh, was the average triangle count where the artist felt comfortable was about 300,000 to 500,000 triangles. Uh, this is 15 times what an average Gears 5 asset was, so this is already a massive boost. Uh, some assets did go over this, uh, got, some got near a million, uh, but generally this was the sweet spot we, we found. Uh, certain workflows were quite painful in tests going to 1 million triangles or higher. We did do some tests of going above 1 million triangles. Um, and the DCC tools would slow down a lot. UV editing was one of the largest pain points for us uh, above 1 million triangles. Uh, importing and re-importing the asset into UV5 starts to slow down a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so this was one of the reasons why the artist ultimately kind of shied away a little bit from going over a million triangles. Uh, we also tested 8K texture painting and Substance Painter was fairly slow for, for our artists when we were testing that. So the artist preferred to stick with 4K, which as a technical art director, I was quite relieved by, uh, but uh, good to know at least. Um, other things to make note of is Nanite doesn't currently support translucency or mass materials um, or the spline tool, things like pixel depth offset, vertex colors on instancing, uh, or world position offset are not supported, right? So you need to build all those. If you want to do that, you got to bake all that into your geometry right up front. Uh, and, you know, extrapolating as the DCC tools improve around the world, you know, all the various tools, uh, Nanite should scale very well with this in, into the future. Uh, so so the, the, I, I expect the triangle counts will continue to rise. 
vines and foliage. So Nanite currently doesn't deal with mass or translucent materials. So if you can build using an opaque material, that is the best. Uh, so the foliage in the level is um, things like the, the tufts of grass you see there. That is mostly non-Nanite as a result of that alpha constraint. So it is using alpha cards for the tufts of grass. Um, and the additional bonus of that is you're not using nanite for that grass, so you can use pixel depth offset and things like that to blend the vegetation in with the ground, and the ground is nanite. Um, but things like PDO, pixel depth offset, are not supported on nanite. Uh, so that was another win, another reason to not go with nanite for the grass. Um, and Epic has said nanite is maybe not the best use of extremely detailed um, opaque foliage assets, example a tree. Um, so we kind of felt like we were aligning with Epic on that. Uh, that said, things like these vines were generated all in Geo, uh, and they were generated using the Blender Ivy app, and they, they are all nanite. Uh, for for these these vines and uh, that that seemed to work quite well you can see in the overdraw nanite overdraw mode there you can see there is a bit of overlap there for sure so something to watch out for but it, it seemed to work out quite well for us so decals we leveraged parallax occlusion decals uh, this allowed us to fix seams with crashing geometry as well as add additional details so yeah, you can see here in this video, there's there's some seams and these these decals are being um, brought over top to kind of hide those seams and add, add some extra detail. Uh, these parallax occlusion decals have all the same benefits of our base material. They have tinting, detail maps, macro maps, parallax occlusion mapping. Uh, and so we can get a really, really great detail out of these. Uh, and, and we re definitely realized pretty early on that having a strong decal workflow is quite important uh, when you're using nanite assets, given the material painting limitations, like I spoke about the vertex colors, per instance, is not supported, things like that. So, so having a strong decal workflow is, is definitely key. We have created a new base material setup. Um, nothing revolutionary here, but I uh, thought people might be interested. Uh, we allow up to four material layers. Uh, we have the ability to change the blend mode per layer. Everything is wrapped into a material function and uh, clear naming conventions and guidelines. So we definitely are very um, strict with the tech artists uh, in terms of ensuring that everything is in a material function, no matter how small, and just keeping everything compartmentalized and, and agile that way. And uh, we have a huge document with clear naming conventions and guidelines around our material creation. And it's a mixture of per layer, micro detail, and macro detail functions you can see there. We have created a new texture pipeline. Uh, we call it the TC Texture Toolkit. Uh, this allows easy managing of textures and materials using Substance, Mega Scans, and Unreal. This uh, sets up texture references, metadata like categories and tags, and interfaces with Perforce automatically. I can see a screenshot of, of the tool here. And uh, it exports to Unreal with appropriate channel packing setup, uh, packing normal with roughness and metalness like Gears 5, and uh, allows auto importing into Unreal. So yeah, the, worth noting the, the normal and roughness and metalness just like Gears 5, we, we channel pack all those into a BC7 to save texture memory, and that really uh, that really helped us out on Gears 5 to keep our disk size down, and we'll, we're continuing to do that. Texture generation. Uh, assets shared uh, a base rock color normal and roughness texture for the most part. We did bake out unique AO cavity and curvature maps per asset using Marmoset Toolbag 4. Uh, baking recent uh, speeds have been recently sped up using uh, RTX cards. Uh, and the bake would happen on the Megascan's high poly asset, just to get the most detail baked down. Uh, we would create base textures in Substance, Photoshop, or Mixer. And we would always replace the Megascan's materials with our own for consistency and control. And so assets on the left is our material, right is mega scans and like I mentioned most of the assets here were were not mega scans but when we did use mega scans and for other mega scans tests we've done this tends to be the workflow we go with detail mapping so big jump for gears 5 to gears 5 we were excited to add detail maps uh, to most assets that was one of the big you know adjustments to Gears 5 over Gears 4. And um, we wanted to keep going with this for the next pipeline. So we added um, more detail. So we added detail 
diffuse and a detail of roughness as well. We only use detail normals on Gears 5. And we've packed all of this into a single BC7 texture. Again, to save memory, we leveraged the color curve uh, in base material to give a grayscale diffuse map some color if needed. So we can recolorize this single channel grayscale color um, and we can recolorize that if needed. And we add detail map masking to allow multiple detail map sets per material. So we can have more than one detail map now per material. If you have metal with wood in the same material, that can be two different detail maps. This can get expensive. We are uh, looking into texture array support currently, um, just blocked on MIP generation functioning for texture arrays. But that should be online shortly. Paintable Volume Fog. So we built a Paintable Volume Fog system for Gears 5, and, and uh, I, I spoke about it in Unreal Dev Days 2019. Uh, but we have made some enhancements to it, and uh, some of those enhancements are we can have brushes now that can be arbitrary meshes, so any mesh can be a brush. Um, the layering system allows stacking and overlapping of brushes. It's much more responsive than Gears 5. Uh, we now have fog shadowing, so the fog shadows itself and shadows the ground, and improved fog noise and breakup. So you can see a small example of the workflow here where we have uh, a mesh and we're moving, moving this all around. Definitely shout out to James Sharp who wrote this, this system. You can see we also have a ground cover mesh as well that's generating sort of a ground fog here. James is moving that around. We've also added uh, improved noise materials to the to the fog, and now with the power of Xbox Series X and S, we can have higher grid pixel size, or I should say lower grid pixel sizes, which yields better quality of the fog and allows more texture. You can see the texture in the fog there, which really you know really helps. Layered materials. So this was another interesting finding. Um, because we can no longer uh, vertex paint material layers due to extremely high vertex counts, and then it doesn't support it. So even if Nanite did add, oh, you can have vertex painting per instance, um, we probably wouldn't want to use that because that would blow our memory budgets immediately. Um, so we had to rely on a variety of other techniques to layer in detail and to replace our vertex color workflow that our, our artists are frankly very used to from Gears 5 and Gears 4. Um, we've been using it for 10, 20 years, vertex color, so we have to break that habit. So some of the things we use instead is we use the material up vector. Um, this is a nice per pixel sort of ability to cake in sand on top of surfaces or whatever. Uh, we used a lot of decals. We use place debris, which is sort of nanite place kit bash debris assets. Um, and we also used blending of non-nanite meshes using pixel depth offset. So I'll talk about that a little bit here. Um, first, one, one of the areas that we did some work here is we did a volumetric material layer painting uh, system. Uh, Ryan Dowling Soka on our team has sort of just done a test of what would material layer painting look like with nanite. And so this is leveraging our paintable volumetric fog approach of intersecting height map technology and allows the artist to paint material layers in an editor. Um, it paints in world space across mesh boundaries, so that's great. And we can create many brushes on separate layers to get the desired result. Uh, currently, there's some performance concerns around here, uh, around this workflow where it adds 30% to the GPU costs, but this we're almost certain will come down with some, some findings that we've recently had. So we'll get this performant. But that, that's sort of the main issue here is, is just getting performance in line, but the, the tool set and everything is working. Um, so this might be a way we go in the future. Uh, virtual textures. Textures in this scene were mostly all 4K resolution. Uh, 8K in our test didn't make much of a difference on our assets. Uh, we have set up all of our texture samplers to be streaming virtual textures. And so this, this is great. So everything is a streaming virtual texture now. Uh, this allows the use of high resolution textures without blowing texture budgets due to textures being split into tiles. So we can now incur higher resolution textures. Even 4K for us is, is pretty high. You know, Gears 5 would cap out at 2K for, for majority of assets. 
Uh, virtual textures are more expensive than traditional textures. There's two texture fetches and some math. Um, so we did a change where we reuse the UVs when sampling textures to reduce the cost. Uh, and I did a quick profile here just to see where we were landing. The, the GPU cost is neg negligible at 0 0.032 milliseconds and the CPU cost is still quite low at 0.2 milliseconds on Xbox Series X. Texture memory. Uh, so in this scene, we have total virtual texture physical mem memory of 379 meg, file cache size of 128. Um, the one interesting fact was the total disk size was 1.5 gigabytes. Uh, so this was, uh, there's a lot of textures there on disk. Uh, and the streaming texture pool is 550 meg. Now the thing with virtual textures is you always have to remember, oh wait, there's also regular textures in this game. You know, maybe it's visual effects textures or something like that. And so that's its own pool. And uh, anyways, there was about 131 megs of regular textures in this scene. Um, Non-streaming MIPS, so were 430 megs. So, you know, these are, it, there's two pools now, two things to watch for. Uh, so it's something we're getting used to still, but really excited about virtual textures and, and kind of where that's going. Okay. so. Back to sort of tiling. So tiling grounds and walls. We we ran into some issues here. Uh, we our artists want are so used to having a arbitrary ground plane that has a tiling texture across it to give it that detail, and you know we can't get that detail anymore because we want to use that we want to use that with nanite. We want to use nanite to get the that really great crunchy polygon detail. So the problem is is if we made had a tw you know. 20 meter by 20 meter room and we just baked out that ground mesh as geometry that's like 20 million triangles every room like that really starts to add up and blow our memory budgets pretty quickly so we we sort of thought a bit about how to to do this um and so we added the ability to tile a ground mesh uh using a blueprint and uh, layer in detail. So I'll talk about that. So this is the tiling mesh blueprint. Uh, so we created a blueprint that allow us to tile uh, any mesh tile. And um, we're trying to make it this as similar to the artist as possible as just tiling a height map. And uh, the blueprint would spawn a non-nanite liquid or dirt mesh as well that would um, blend in with these, this nanite tiling ground. Um, and then we would use world position off, offset and then paint vertex colors on these other ground tiles to blend them in, if that makes sense. So because these this water mesh and this dirt mesh are not nanite, we can use all of our old tricks like world position offset and pixel depth offset. And uh, this kind of became a bit of a replacement for vertex color painting, where we had this tiling ground water plane. And we could just paint vertex colors. The the ground would come up and intersect with the nanite mesh. There'd be a pixel depth offset, so it'd blend nicely, and we get some water, puddles, painted, dirt, and all that mixed in with the ground. Um, and this, this turned out to be quite, quite cool. Uh, and then we also had, added the ability to spawn mesh debris as well uh, with this. Um, in the future, Epic has mentioned they do intend to support some form of displacement map with Nanite, and, and that would be fantastic and would maybe mitigate the need for this blueprint. Okay, changing gears here to temporal super resolution. Uh, this is an image with a 400% zoom, uh, and I sort of was testing out temporal super resolution to see, you know, what kind of quality are, are we getting here? Um, and, you know, spoiler the quality is fantastic it, it really is superior to the gen 4 upscaler that uh, gears 5 and and uh, ue4 are using um, downside is it is more expensive currently uh, you can see some of my performance numbers here where uh, 1440p to 4k was 2.7 milliseconds uh, 1080p to 4k is 2.23 milliseconds um, the gen 4 upscaler is in the same situation was about a bit under a millisecond uh, on a series x um, but we have identified some Xbox specific optimizations we could do here. We're working with Epic on that. Uh, we really here, when you see the two comparisons, um, this is this is sort of the Gen 4 1080p to 4K and then the TSR 1080p to 4K. If you look at things like the grass blades, uh, they really get much sharper with the TSR. Uh, but even the, the detail on the sand, there's a lot more sand pebbles you can see in the TSR version. Um, and so and Epic recommends targeting 1080p and allowing TSR to upsample to 4K. Um, 
So that's sort of where, why I was testing 1080p here. So really phenomenal results. And so I was digging more into it, you know, let's, let's get into this a bit. So I was sort of like, what is 1440p to 4k? So why was I testing that? So 1440p to 4k was basically where Gears 5 on Xbox One X landed. Xbox Series X is higher, uh, but Xbox One X was about 1440p to 4K with the Gen 4. And so I wanted to compare that to 1080p to 4K with TSR. And you can see here, even with this comparison, even though the Gen 4 has more pixel data to work with because it's higher res, still, to me, doesn't look as good as TSR 1080p to 4K. So really a testament to, to the TSR. Again, if you look at the, gra the grass blades and the sand detail and, and some of the, the normal map detail on the rocks, the, the smaller rocks, you can really see the, the improvement with TSR. Uh, and then finally, this was a test of 1080p to 4K of TSR versus native 4K. Uh, and again, you can see, yeah, some of our world, some of our materials are moving around here and lighting, but really the clarity is uh, comparable. It is comparable. Uh, so it's it's really impressive what TSR is doing. Lumen quality. So jumping into Lumen, uh, our Alpha Point demo uses all real-time lighting. It's uh, running real-time virtual shadow maps. It's running Lumen Indirect and Lumen Reflections. You can see here I'm moving the the light around, and you can see the uh, all the reflections updating in the light. Uh, overall, Lumen visual quality is quite strong in our opinion. Uh, it's a huge quality of life improvement for lighters. There's no UVs, no level assets you have to save all the time to do bakes, no light bakes you have to manage. Oh man, the light bake failed overnight. We got to do it again. Or so and so artist had this level checked out. The light bake didn't submit. These are all issues we had on Gears 5. Those are all gone now, which is phenomenal. Some visual pain points with Lumen that we're still sort of looking at. Uh, semi rough reflections can be a little bit noisy with Lumen. Um, the Lumen screen trace pass doesn't respect the indirect lighting intensity value of lights. Um, and this can result in some screen dependent indirect if that parameter is too high. Now I have, I think uh, Epic has mentioned that they might be deprecating the indirect lighting intensity value in the future to prevent this issue from happening. And then sometimes on camera cuts, you can see Lumen recalculate. If you have a cinematic, um, you can see some recalculation there. Lumen performance. So there was a lot of testing here I was doing to take a look at what the options were. Um, so what are you looking at here? So this is me flipping through the post-process quality settings on Lumen from 0.25 all the way to one. And then also you can see uh, sort of we did a custom take on Lumen with a custom CVAR tuning to get a bit more performance back. And you can see here, um, on the bottom right of the slide, you can see the performance numbers. At the very bottom is the total, so you can just pay attention to that. This is all at 1080p on Xbox Series X. So you can see the 1.0 quality is 5.6 milliseconds. 0.25 quality is 4.4. Um, TC Custom, this is kind of where we kind of found the best of all worlds. Uh, you can see the CVARs there on the slide that, that we set for TC Custom. Um, this got us about 3.6 milliseconds, 3.688 on Xbox Series X. And then their Epic also has engine quality high. Uh, this is mainly for targeting 60 FPS, um, sort of what Epic has said. And this was even faster at three uh, milliseconds. So there's various um, ways to, you know, various flavors of Lumen you can definitely go with, various quality settings. It is quite scalable, which is fantastic. And so we're sort of looking forward to, um, performance improving on Lumen over time. <clears throat> um, we did find that lowering the Lumen GI quality below one can result in some temporal flickering that, especially around the AO, that may not be acceptable at this time um, and, and some ghosting issues. So, so yeah, I think there's a delicate sort of console variable balance to be had there. Um, but we need to do a bit more testing here and test some of the Epic's other engine settings and see if there's something there that gives us good performance without the, the ghosting or the temporal flickering. Still work in progress here for sure. Lumen Reflections, this is visually fantastic. We get uh, real-time reflections on everything in the level. Uh, 
we also get things like micro self reflections that really prevent things like specular leaking. Uh, we had things like bent normal textures on Gears 5 for our character assets um, that prevented you know, the specular leaking. It's no longer necessary to bake out these textures. Uh, we also, of course, don't have to place reflection capture actors because it's all lumen reflections now. Uh, so this reflects. Uh, the software-based lumen reflects a sine distance field mesh representation, um, or it can re represent a triangle representation of the scene using hardware ray tracing. Uh, and it also uses a screen trace for additional details similar to SSR. And you can see in this shot here, the particles are reflecting in the water. That is the screen trace occurring. Uh, the one maybe the the one issue here we see is the variable cost dependent on size on screen. Uh, so we kind of got spoiled with RCAs on Gears Five, where the RCA cost was pretty consistent for us. It was always between about point. 5 and 0.75 and didn't really change much. It was always almost about 0.6 something. Anyways, this, this can be quite variable now with lumen reflections, depending, again, like I mentioned, how many pixels on screen are reflecting, how rough that reflection is. Um, so we did find that semi-rough reflections are the, the most expensive lumen reflections um, and crystal clear reflections are a bit faster than those. And so, yeah, in this scene here, uh, in this scene here, the the lumen cost, lumen reflection cost is uh, 0.6 to reflect um, this this water here. So um, yeah, it just kind of scales around. Virtual shadow maps, another fantastic UE5 feature, we're very excited about. Uh, this is really key to the appropriate amount of to get the appropriate amount of shadow resolution to to do justice to your nanite meshes. Uh, and contact shadows are sort of the inferior alternative that uh, Gears 5 on Xbox Series X utilized. Uh, this requires a nanite asset to work properly. Um, so there is some support for non and nanite assets as well. And it creates really like a ray trace like soft shadow uh, fall off, which is fantastic. You can see in this image here, we're flicking between the two with virtual shadow maps on and off. And you can see really the detail uh, you get off those that cobblestone floor. And uh, yeah, you can see also the detail from the shadows on the grass blades you get with the virtual shadow maps. It's really precise, it's fantastic. Um, so we're really happy with the quality. <clears throat> Performance for virtual shadow maps. Uh, we initially had some concerning results in this scene. Uh, virtual shadow maps were taking about 6.3 milliseconds at 1080p, um, which was, was not good. Uh, we evaluated in pics and you know, I was looking through pics and I was noticing there was these really large shadow casters uh, that were, were costing like, you know, 0.7 each, 0.7 milliseconds each. And this was really hurting us. And um, what I sort of learned from this process is I went and disabled shadows. I noticed that it was like water, water and, and sand and things I didn't really, we didn't really need to cast shadows. And so I disabled shadows on all that. And then the virtual shadow map cost went down to three milliseconds at 1080p. So uh, much more reasonable at that point. And so the takeaway here is the size of the shadow caster may affect performance of virtual shadow maps, especially if that shadow caster is non-nanite, which those assets in that case were non-nanite. Like we wanted the water to do the pixel depth offset blend. So it was non-nanite, but it was accidentally tagged as a shadow caster and it was large. It was worst case scenario for virtual shadow maps and so that was really hurting us so yeah definitely be mindful of your non nanite shadow casters if they're especially if they're large that can really cause issues nanite performance so nanite based performance is uh, fairly consistent uh, regardless of what's on screen perf at 1080p on xbox series x is about Two, bit over two milliseconds and we you know I was did a test where I was looking down the hallway of alpha point you know that was 2.095 milliseconds then I went and stared at a wall and that was two milliseconds <laughs> you know the cost is very consistent and really we like consistent consistent is good really helps us with budgeting and so um, <laughs> again similar to virtual textures and having to remember that there's also a texture pool uh, we have to remind ourselves that there is also a base pass not just the the nanite base pass so the base pass in this scene and pre-pass total about 1.185 milliseconds and that consists primarily of things like vegetation the blended water and sand in the level using pdo and the character of course the character cannot be nanite because it's got a skeletal mesh uh, and so Material complexity and variety 
and probably I would say overdraw is some of the, the best ways to control nanite cost. Uh, this is something we're still learning. It's still early days for us, um, but uh, overall very happy with nanite performance and quality. It's, it's phenomenal and really a real game changer for the industry overall, I would say. Some view modes of nanite. You can see that there's the triangle view there, and you can see the material, uh, the draw call view. That's the unique material view. So we did a few other uh, cool little tests here. We were inspired by some of Epic's uh, Niagara insects in their um, UE5 reveal video. So we added some insects as well to the scene using Niagara. They're you know GPU based, of course. They collide, collide and spawn with the SDFs. Um, 6,655 instructions, and uh, there's about 500 particles per emitter. And so I wanted to measure this and see what this costs on Xbox Series X. And it was about 0.134 just for these insects. Super, like, relatively cheap for what it is. Um, and then, of course, you have to remind yourself there's also the base pass cost of these insects. And that was about 0.2 to, you know, in a medium size frame. Um, but uh, overall, uh, really promising results with using Niagara to kind of create things like add life to the world of insects and things. We, one of our changes I mentioned at the beginning of the talk was the custom visual effects buffer. So we added a new G buffer to the base pass. Uh, materials can write custom visual effects data to the G buffer and consume it in Niagara. And so this is what allows the particles to spawn off the emissive texture on the door. Uh, so that's just Niagara particles spawning off a, a, off a, a G buffer, a custom G buffer there. And so really proved that UE5 is, is very, very extensible, just similar to UE4. And uh, yeah, we've really produced some cool results there. Convolution Bloom uh, on console. So Convolution Bloom, this isn't a UE5 feature. Why am I talking about this? Well, this was uh, you know a non-gaming feature added to UE4 uh, in 4.16 by Epic, and uh, you know I really like the look of it, and so does our art directors. And so this is something I was like, hey, can we? Is this within reach now on on Xbox Series X? So initially it was not. It was seven milliseconds. Um, but we did um, some optimization pass, uh, did an optimization pass such as running it at quarter resolution. Keep in mind this happens after the TSR, so it's not a, impacted by the, the input resolution for TSR. Um, so at quarter resolution, this was now down to 0.9 milliseconds um, on Xbox Series X. So it's getting it within the realm. We have a whole other round of optimizations going in. We did some code changes to make this run on Xbox because it's not even exposed on Xbox to run or on console in general. Um, yeah, but really happy. You can see uh, in the screenshot on the top right there with the fairy dust, each little fairy dust has sort of the star pattern coming off of it. And that's the convolution bloom kind of picking up on, on that. I thought that was really cool. So um, hopefully we can land this for games. You know, it's not no promise we will, but we're trying. Perf UI widget. So we added a, a cool little blueprint. This is something that was a, a pet project of mine where um, I wanted to get instantaneous frames per second, millisecond data, percent at 30, percent at 45, and percent at 60 while I was playing. You know, on Gears 5, we would have to wait for QA to play the level. We'd get the performance report back and, um, that was sort of, you know, a little bit slow. And so I was like, can we get this in real time while we're playing? And it really gives you a better feel for how the level's running when you see it all in, in real time there. So there's the average, there's a the live number. Anyways, it's a it's a testament to the, the power of, um, you know, blueprints and runtime blueprints using the, the widget UI. Uh, and we'll keep building on this, I think, for future projects. Memory overview. Uh, so we have a few static meshes in the scene, but what's interesting here, the takeaway is the memory isn't that high. So we had 44 unique objects in this scene and it was 61 meg. Um, there's of course the Nanite streaming pool size, which is 512 meg, um, and Nanite total was, was over a gig, um, but the actual static mesh memory is 61 megs um, sitting there. So we could we could layer in much, much more detail than this. I think also take this with a grain of salt, right? This is just a one one sort of hallway in a room. Um, normally you'd have uh, a lot more uh, like characters in here and another adjacent room you'd probably have to keep in memory as you transition to this room. And so that this memory would get a lot larger, but it's quite, uh, quite impressive that it's 61 meg only. So Xbox Series X performance overview. We were targeting, uh, so this, 
this is sort of just overall performance, it, you know, it, running around in the alpha point scene. Uh, we were targeting 60 frames per second uh, at 50% or higher input resolution using TSR up to 4K. Uh, with all next gen features enabled, such as Lumen, um, Convolution Bloom, um, Nanite virtual shadow maps, we're averaging about 46 frames per second. Uh, the average uh, milliseconds is 21 milliseconds. The GPU, of course, is where we're bottlenecked at 21. Um, and draw thread and game thread are, are running uh, comparatively f fairly slow. These, this is from a development build, so draw thread and game thread are probably a lot higher than they would be in a, in a regular test build. Um, the most expensive systems are Lumen and Virtual Shadow Maps, followed by TSR and then Nanite uh, when we're sort of looking at this uh, in terms of performance. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not 60, uh, but there is a, a path to 60 when you're around 46 frames per second. We, we will land that working with Epic, of course. So, so yeah, that's where we're at today. Xbox Series S performance. Here's a screenshot for X, Xbox Series S um, with Alpha Point. The target output resolution is 1440p or 1080p at 60 FPS. Um, everything's sort of TBD right now, especially with Series S. Um, TSR, extremely helpful with Xbox Series S. It really helps um, with those lower resolutions and bringing that back up to something high like 1440. Um, I feel like because TSR's performance is mainly uh, a result of the input resolution, not the output, you're maybe encouraged to target higher output resolutions with, with Lockhart um, because you don't incur that cost with the TSR very much at least. Um, so maybe we'll go 1440p at the end of the day. It's un unclear. Um, the current internal resolutions for Series S are still too low. We need to get those higher. Um, and so we're working with Epic on that. Um, virtual sad shadow maps immediately stood out when we started profiling as a problem for Xbox Series S. Um, and this is just due to a HZB issue with virtual shadow maps. Um, Epic informed us trying to disable the HZB with virtual shadow maps. And we did that and got uh, 1.2 milliseconds back immediately on Series S. Uh, so hopefully some, I, Hopefully a lot of these optimizations will kind of be baked into future versions of UE5. CPU, not much of a concern on Series S. It, it rips through that all just like Series X. And uh, yeah, featured GPU optimizations required on Series S. Um, Epic will make it all faster working with TC. So just trying to summarize alpha point learnings. Uh, UE5 is stable and viable for production from our point of view. Uh, it works great on Xbox Series X and S. We love the constant predictable cost of Nanite, regardless of scene load. This is a game changer. Um, but it's also interesting, it's the largest area of workflow change for content creators with UE5. This really takes some adjustment to get used to these massive meshes. You know, Right now, there's a lot of demos of people pulling uh, mega scan into assets, which look phenomenal. Um, but when people start building these assets, I think we'll sort of hit some of the same blockers we hit were in terms of getting the DCC tools up to up to snuff to kind of hit these high triangle counts. Um, and the largest, yeah, like I said, the largest bottleneck is the DCC tools for for hitting high quality, uh, high poly uh, nanite assets. It's not not the renderer in UE5. Uh, Lumen produces beautiful real-time results. Um, it's just some performance work to be done by Epic. Epic is aware of this. Uh, virtual shadow maps produce uh, amazing ray trace like shadows. Uh, performance concerns with lots of large shadow casters and multiple light sources, but um, after speaking with Epic, we feel uh, more confident around this. Uh, one other finding is, you know, just the content is is really king with this stuff. It, it, the content creator workflows is, is just as important as nailing the technology, right? You know, the example there is definitely the DCC tool being the problem with Nanite. And so it's really just about. Um, yeah, tech art and engineering, smoothing out all those rough edges as much as possible for the content creators, making their lives as easy as possible because they have a ton of high quality content to create in the next generation. Um, yeah, I'll try and move through this quicker. Uh, so we, yeah, we need to keep an eye on Lockhart resolutions in memory, uh, ensure we're not out of position. We need about 33% GPU optimizations with UE5 to land a solid 60 FPS with uh, dynamic resolution scaling. Um, and it seems like there is a path to that. And really, UE5 truly unlocks the artist's potential and allows us to realize amazingly detailed worlds. It's, it's really, 
it's amazing to see how all the different technologies come together. You know, how virtual shadow maps complement Nanite and Lumen works best with Nanite assets and TSR allows Lumen to, you know, have higher quality. And it's just all kind of orchestrated and it works really well. And uh, yeah, very excited about UE5. Moving on to a character. So we did a test with a character. Uh, this was um, uh, a cool project we did after Alpha Point. So we'll play a video now just showing off our, our next gen character running on Xbox Series X. Okay, hope you like that video. And so here's some stats on this character. Uh, he is dense. So we have uh, four times more facial topology than Gears 5, three times the body topology. The groom assets, like the beard and the hair, is 250 times higher than Gears 5. Uh, some of these triangle counts are, are obscene with the, the groom assets. So <laughs> the hair is 3.25 million triangles, you know, beard is 240,000. There's a lot of triangles here, um, and this is all thanks to the new groom assets in, um, that we're using. One funny stat I was thinking about the eyelashes being 3,500 triangles, and that is kind of the budget for an entire Xbox 360 character is now contained in the eyelashes of, of one of these characters. Um, so we've come a long way. And the fact that we have Peach Fuzz, I feel like this will be the generation of Peach Fuzz. Uh, you know, we, Peach Fuzz was always fairly hard to attain uh, with the Xbox One generation. So this, this is exciting <laughs> to have Peach Fuzz. Uh, so how did we build this character? Um, we did, you know, MetaHumans came out and we, we took a hard look at this and we, we wanted to leverage MetaHumans as much as we can. It's all there. All, Epic's done a lot of hard work on it. Um, so how can we best use this? And we found that we really liked MetaHumans for teeth and eye creation. It makes really fantastic teeth and eye. Um, we also figured out that we should probably quickly align with the MetaHumans face topology, given that this is a big investment by Epic and we'll continue to have probably improvements for many years to come. And so using Quixel Bridge, you can export to Maya, the facial topology. So we, we did that and just sort of mapped our, our face to that facial topology. And we also leveraged the MetaHumans materials, which are all really well done and really allows us to achieve a high level of quality. Um, we found that we, we had a specific vision and a concept we were trying to hit, and we, we couldn't quite do that with the MetaHumans creator. And so we, we still want to model these faces using DCC tools. Um, <clears throat> so we went with that. And we, of course, m leveraging multiple detail maps and cloth shaders. Things like cloth shaders were pretty expensive previous gen, and we didn't do a lot of that. So we're doing a lot of cloth shaders now, a lot of multiple detail maps. Uh, sculpted this all in ZBrush and uh, used uh, our Substance Painter custom texture pipeline I talked about earlier to get this all into Unreal. We're using 4K texture maps. Uh, we tried 8K. We did not really notice a difference there at all. Um, again, as a technical art director, I was relieved. So 4K, um, we're using from Substance Source and Mega Scans um, primarily. And we used Maya X Gen Grooming uh, with its Unreal integration. Um, with Alembic for the groom assets. 
how does this character run? So like I mentioned, that demo was captured live off Xbox Series X. Uh, so we are, we are running at 30 FPS there and it's looking great. We do uh, definitely need some optimizations to the groom assets, you know, given the triangle counts here, it's not a huge surprise, but the groom asset for this shot, this exact shot I, I, that's in the slide is uh, 8.7 milliseconds for the groom assets. Um, and this is at a, around 1080p. Um, the peach, we need to do a lot here. We need to do like peach fuzz lods, um, drop the peach fuzz at a distance. Um, we did a, a savings here where we disabled hair strand sky AO and that saved 2.5 milliseconds. Could you get away with this in any scene at all? Probably not, but in, at least in these test scenes, we could do that and it gives us back 2.5. Uh, so Epic has told us they are they do have future groom asset optimizations coming down the pipe, and we're excited for that. We made this comparison image, and this was really uh, cool and enlightening to see. So this is our at the bottom is our cinematic JD. Um, from Gears 5. This is one of our, you know, better assets from, from Gears 5. And uh, compared to this character, the next gen character, uh, Gen 5 at the top, and you can really see the detailed difference here. Um, so observe things like the geometry density around the eye and brow are much, much more refined and, and it's much more dense in the Gen 5 character. Um, that we have a proper painted groom asset, eyebrow, uh, Gears 5 five used cards for the eyebrows. And even that was a big jump in Gears 5. In Gears 4, we didn't even have cards for the eyebrows. It was just a painted texture. Um, and the eye shader detail, you know, we're using the MetaHumans eye shader. It's forward rendered, um, which gives us gives uh, Epic and us a lot more control. It uh, looks fantastic. Better pore detail here. And we're using the new Burly SSSSS. Um, and uh, versus the JD for Gen 4, just use standard uh, screen space subsurface scattering. So yeah, huge difference there. Um, and so what are we working on now? Uh, we are putting the two together. So we have this character, we have this environment. We're making a cinematic test. And so this is some shots from that cinematic test. This is very work in progress, early days. Uh, but just sort of what is what does this look like? How does this perform on Xbox? Um, how does the groom assets move with the face? Um, you know, getting all the blend shapes and all that all that set up as well. So um, nothing more than a few screenshots to show of this today because it's still very early days. But we're we're feeling quite um, optimistic that we'll be able to achieve a quality bar noticeably higher than um, Gears 5. So conclusions uh, overall. So the sum of the additional visual systems together combined with the power of Xbox Series X and S really creates a noticeable visual leap from previous gen games. Uh, embracing hybrid workflows tends to yield to the best results for achieving quality. For example, um, using mix and max match with mega scans. So mixing and matching geometry materials from substance and DCC. Uh, MetaHumans hybrid workflow, you know, use MetaHumans to generate certain components of the head and, you know, use the base materials if you can. Um, but generally you can still model things in the DCC and kind of combine that with the MetaHumans. Uh, temporal super resolution produces amazing results, even at lower resolutions, allowing us to fully saturate the Xbox Series GPUs and leverage the full UE5 feature set. We're not sacrificing quality to scale down, essentially. Uh, the current generation consoles combined with UE5 will really fully unlock our artist potential this generation. It's going to be phenomenal. And uh, yeah, UE5 games on Xbox Series X and S will look incredible. Uh, you know, I think all these the alpha point and the cinematic test and this character is really, really for me at least cemented kind of what the next generation of games will look like. And uh, we're already seeing some early signs of some next-gen games coming out that look fantastic. And I think all these UE5 investigations have really made me um, excited for, for where we're going to get to this generation. So, so yeah, thank you uh, for watching. Thanks to Epic for the support and information to make this presentation better. Uh, thanks to all these folks from the coalition who really helped and built a lot of this art and technology that I'm presenting here. This is not just me by any means. This is a, a whole group of people that have done some amazing work. Um, so yeah. Also, the coalition is hiring. So come join us. Uh, you can apply here at this email address or go to the website. Um, but yeah, we have so many open positions. There was too many to list on the slide. So you know, come to the website, check it out. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.